first sight, the concept of price discrimination might appear rather daunting to most of us. One would associate the word discrimination with intolerance, inequity and apartheid laws. But in economics, price discrimination is a fundamentally different notion. Price discrimination is a situation where a firm sells the exact same product to different consumers at different prices. Its aim is to increase its revenue and hence its profits. But not all firms can price discriminate and some conditions are necessary. Firstly, firms need to have some ability to set prices. Price discrimination cannot occur in a situation of perfect competition where firms are price takers. That is why price discrimination is most commonly found in oligopoly and monopoly markets. Secondly, different consumers need to have different price elasticities of demand for the product. If this wasn't the case, they would not be willing to pay different prices for the same good. This can be seen on the diagram. Perhaps the most common form of price discrimination is the so-called third-degree price discrimination. Public transport operators, such as Metlink here in Melbourne, offer reduced concession tickets to students and senior citizens, while adults need to pay for the full fare. In this case, it is evident that students and senior citizens have lower incomes and therefore a lower ability to pay for the ticket. A third condition necessary for price discrimination to occur is the firm's ability to separate consumers. Otherwise, it would be all too easy for someone who is enjoying the low price to sell some items to those who would normally be expected to pay the higher price, possibly even earning a little something for themselves. This separation of consumers can be based on gender, age, income or geographical location. The same can be said about movie tickets. Students can enjoy a reduced price by presenting a student card at the ticket desk. Now what about the impact of price discrimination on stakeholders? Well, firms can enjoy higher revenues by practicing price discrimination. In addition, by producing more of the same good, they can benefit from economies of scale. Consumers, at the same time, are now able to afford some of the products which they couldn't in a non-discriminated market. And there's one other advantage to this win-win situation. By experiencing higher revenues, Price discriminating firms can give something back to the community by investing in infrastructure, research and development. Now you know everything about price discrimination. <laughs>